Awo, Shabbat, Shalom, Rastafari. Now, this portion, this Torah portion, which in the Western Gentile um, world comes as the end of the, the end of the year, with their so-called New Year's coming up on the Sunday. Now, this is the Friday Eve, the Friday Eve of uh, December 30th, 2011. And this is our Rastafari um, Sabbath studies or the Sabbatical Scrolls. And now, this is the 11th. This marks the 11th Sabbath or Shabbat or Senbet Ken, the Senbet Ken, the 11th Asara Anden Yawin, Senbet Ken in this particular um, season as well as the correspondence is this particular end of the year and Sunday being that new year in the West, the Western sense. But in our Hebraic sense, we go to our Torah scroll reading and feeding, and this is the updated. This is the updated portion right here. Now, as you can see right here, you can see where we have the 11th, which is Karebe. Uh, Karebe. In the Hebrew, is Vayigash. Uh, or why you guys that's the 11th and this is the updated portion you can see there's a subscription of two that's next to it you can see the subscription two next to the transliteration of q apostrophe e r r e b e or karebe 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 which means he approached or he drew near he approached or he drew near we had to amend amend our former um, sabbatical study scroll reading and feeding. Now this particular update has been noted in the revised version so you can download it from the WWWLOJ Society and it is called weekly Sabbath uh, readings as well as our calendar so one can stay in tune and understand what the reason for the season is. Now this particular Sabbatical, um, this this Torah portion, this parsha, or this kufum, in the Hebrew being known as a Vayigash or Vayigash, it concerns Yosef or Joseph, Joseph and his Joseph and his brothers. When Joseph and his brothers last, the last um, seven days was concerning. Uh, Miketz was concerning Joseph and Pharaoh's dream. And it's more concerning those seven cows, the seven uh, Hathors. That needs to be considered, especially in this particular prophetic um, dispensation that we're in, approaching the 2012 and uh, what's the connection? There's much connection, much overstanding. But first to get a basic standing in this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, Vayigash or Vayigash is the Hebrew for and he drew near or then he drew near. It's the first word in the Parsha, the Kufa, the 11th weekly Torah portion in the annual Hebraic cycle of the Orita Minbab or Nibab, as we say, Bamarinya in the Royal Amharic. Now, this is the IOTA um, software. The IOTA software, Amharic Bible software, which uses His Majesty's, Kadamawi Hala Selassie's, the authorized uh, King's Amharic, or the authorized version of the Royal Amharic Bible. And here we're going to use, begin to use this particular pointer. The Hebrews would use the Yad, and the Yad is actually like a finger, a finger pointing like that, a stick with a end of finger pointing. This right here is known as, you know, the um, the pike on the flag. This is from a mini Ethiopia um, imperial flag, right? And so we said we'll use this as a as a pointer. And here we'll call it the Lisana uh, Sendek, or the tongue of the scepter, the the tongue of the 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 symbol or the national flag, but the, the scepter is, is very good when we understand the meaning of sendek, as sendek alama, the sendek alama, which is the, 
the scepter of the Mahdi, or it's also the particular symbol of the Ainati, the Arunguade Bicha K, but moreover, the green, yellow, and red, or red, gold, green flag, it is the rainbow circle throne flag, and it's that particular symbol that was given to Noch concerning this particular time that we're in, because they were talking about the floods, where the flood destroyed the whole earth, and it was promised that a flood would not, but that there would be waters, you understand, which would destroy certain places, and that would be one of the signs. We've seen that since the Katrina, um, and also the tsunami, but this particular point, and we're going to use this point to point to the particular um, um, letters that's being read, and we're using a software, um, a, a CD. It's a Amharic Bible um, CD, and we'd like to seek to distribute at least the Torah portion readings and feedings and do something a little bit different in this particular Torah reading and feeding, where we will use this pointer to point the particular to the particular letters, the particular letters that are being um, read, as it says right here, it says, Yehudam wada arasu karabe in dihem ale geta yehoi in ne baria be geta ye joro be be geta ye joro andit kalin in dinagar elamnalo in ne nem baria hen atuk otanye in ante in the Pharaon Nehinna. Now we're going to hear the reader. We're going to go through this with the reader. Um, and the reader, the particular um, Ethiopian reader, his name is Paulos Haile Selassie, reading here chapter 44, this portion, Torah portion, reading and feedings. And this is more or less how it would, part of getting us acquainted and accustomed to how in our uh, gatherings in the true and faithful Arastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew gatherings, the Mikorab, our own Ethiopic synagogues, or our, we call it Ayabingi, and, and we have other names for it in this particular dispensation. But the name for that gathering um, Ethiopically, and according to our Hebraic, our black Jewish roots, our Ethiopian Beta Israel roots, is known as the Mikorab, the Mikorab, which was in the Greek called the synagogue, the synagogue, but it has the meaning of the gathering together to hear the reading of the Ethiopic and the Holy Scrolls, the Amharic for us, His Majesty's Bible, the Metzhaf Kedus. And we give thanks to these brothers and sisters from a uh, Jerusalem, Beta Christian, a Jerusalem church located, I think, in Switzerland, um, they composed this CD where the entire um, Met of Caduce, His Majesty's Bible, is read. So we're going to go through that, and then we'll pick up with some of the teachings that are connected and some of the updates that are connected with this particular portion. So the Torah portion reading and feeding, as you can see from the chart, and we would suggest that ones and ones download this particular chart, and we're at 11. We're at 11 right here. This this is 11 right here, and this is the particular Genesis 44:18 to Genesis 47:27. That's the Torah portion. That's the Torah portion reading and feeding of the Orit Zemuse from the Torah. So the Parsha, Parshat is plural, Parsha with a singular. We call it the Beit or the Mi'raf, the Mi'raf or the Mi'rafat because it covers sometimes chapters or portions, paragraphical portions of the chapter. So here we see it's from Genesis 44:18 to Genesis 47:27. So there's a particular um, uh, feeding and reading in this portion that is connected with the previous, they would say the previous week or the previous strong. For us, for I and I as Rastafari, we will say the previous strong. Now, this is connected with um, Yosef. And here we're going to use uh, Tut, King Tut, the black Tut, King Tut right here. This image of King Tut. And we're going to juxtapose that so one can at least get a proper visualization 
of Iusif or of Joseph, though some connect the Joseph of the Bible with the the Aimhotep or the Imhotep, which is the, there's a very important connection there as well between Joseph and, and Aimhotep or Yimhotep. But s symbolically, when we look at the Egyptian style, when we read even in the Bible, it, it talks about how Joseph had to shave because in the position that he was in, he had to conform to the particular um, society that he was in. And this is all noted for Joseph's righteousness and his uprightness and how he, through that living sacrifice, was to be a blessing to his brothers, his bless, a blessing to his brothers. Now, this is from the book of Gates right here. But what's kind of interesting about this is that you see, you know, is that you see uh, this, um, you know, these brothers here with their offering, which can be visualized along with the 12 brothers. Now, this is another statue of King Tut that we find interesting because this this is not a popularized statue of King Tut, of, of King uh, Tehuti. King Tehuti, but we're going to utilize this particular image over here for um, for Yosef, Iusef, and here, here's Iusef, um, or symbolically Joseph, you know what I'm saying, in this particular portion of scripture that we're in now. For the 12 tribes, we'll utilize this particular imagery right here. For the twelve tribes, the twelve, the twelve tribes. Although Joseph symbolically is here under the two fishes or under the Piscean sign, it's noteworthy to note that that Piscean sign also is the two sons of Joseph, who were Ephraim and um, Manasseh, Manasseh and Ephraim. So these two fishes. Now, it's interesting because the two fishes is also the age of Pisces. And some see that we're in or moving from a so-called Piscean age in the uh, 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 retrograde or the recession of the Zodiac. And that it's a Naphtali or the, the Pisces, Pi, from Pisces to uh, Aquarius. This is what would be known as Aquarius. Now, prior to that, we have uh, Capricorn connected with Asir or Asher here. Then we have God, you understand, or Gad, as some would say, but more correct pronunciation be God. This is where the word actually God comes from, if you're over saying it's connected with Sagittarius or the Sator, and then right connected with that is Don, and we have Don here as a scorpion. Now, it's important for us to un understand the, the heavenly witness or the witness that's in the stars. There's an important witness in the stars. Now, humanity and, and I and I in particular, 400 plus years in iniquity of the Amorites, of the Anglo-Americans, to our heritage, we've been totally um, disorientated to our own roots, culturally and spiritually. And even through a, a biblical or scriptural, without the proper uh, comprehension of the of the heavenly signs, one cannot properly interpret the Bible. And we're just in the first book of the Bible, and that's Genesis. And we're in the story of Iusef, or the story of Joseph. You understand the story of Joseph. Now Joseph is meeting with his brothers, and we're going to find in this particular Torah portion. Genesis 44 and 18, that is, is Judah, Yehuda, is Judah. According to the scriptures, this first verse here is, Then Judah came near to him and said, O oh my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. Now, in this particular Torah portion, there's a revelation that's 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 being made. Mm. 
in that particular revelation that's being made. Let's get this. Um, here we're going to note this, but one can go online. We're going to note this particular book. This is the Berashit, or Berashit right here, the Torah portion, which was compiled by yours truly right here. And this is for us to just get a basic referential to this portion. So now, now, now this portion, um, usually which is read in December or January, in this particular portion of Kufum, Yehuda or Judah makes a persuasive plea on behalf of his brother Binyam or Benjamin. Uh, Yosef, Ayusef, reveals himself to his brothers. Jacob, Yaakov, comes down to Egypt. And Joseph, Ayusef's administration of Egypt saves lives, but transforms all the Egyptians into bondmen. Mm. See, this area of, of Scripture, let's go back to this. This area of Scripture concerning concerning um, Joseph and his brothers is significant. And this is why in studying of so-called Egyptology, along with our Bible base and our uh, Sabbath and Torah-based studies, it's very, very important because there are many keys to the proper interpretation of this area of Scripture that has been hidden from modern and counterfeit Christianity today who just have a, a, a Gentile misunderstanding of what was occurring in this particular time and also the, the, the resonance of these events and how they are symbolically even prefigured in prophecy through the Nabim, through the Nabiyat, through the prophets, down to our very time. So for us as Beta is Rael, and as the black Hebrews and the black Jews elect Rastafari, and collectively as Ethiopian Hebrews, it behooves us to study and to show ourselves approved. So in this particular Torah portion, the one known as Vayigash, Vayigash, according to the Ashkenazi, but in our Ethiopic, or rather the royal Amharic, the kings, according to the kings Amharic, it's known as Karabe. Karabe. Now, Karabe means to draw near. There's an Israeli style of martial arts called Krav Maga. Now, Krav, or Karab, Karab, Bamarinya, we say Karab. Others say Krav, modern Jews say Krav, Krav Maga. It means like to near, close, close fighting. You understand? Some call it um, military style street fighting. Krav Maga. So this word that's used in the Amharic Torah or the Orit of Negus and Neges, of the King of Kings, of Haile Selassie, is significant. And, and this is our key and distinctive. Um, word and let's just go to this word again, and let's try to further demonstrate this. Is this particular word right here, right? This particular word, karabe. Now when we go a little bit deeper into the verse. Let's go a little bit deeper and use this iota sulfur, which we give thanks and praise for. And let's go into this verse down here. And when it says near, that's fifty sixty six. When we click on the 5066 and we pull up the Strong's Hebrew, we have Nagash or Norgash. Now, it should be plainly evident and obvious what Norgash is connected with. It's connected with actually Nigus. Nigus, right? But now, let's, let's look at what it says down here for the... For the um, for the definition from Strong's Hebrew, it says a primitive, a primitive root. Can you see this? Let's see if we can bring this. It says a primitive root. Okay, that's better. A primitive root to be or come causatively bring. To be or to come. Kareb, kareb, near, to, to come near or to draw near for any purpose. So this idea of drawing near where it says how Yehuda, that Judah, to him, to his brother Yosef, that he didn't know because his brother Yosef now is in the e Egyptian way of life. 
You understand? He's transformed and he's conformed in a sense to the Egyptian representation. He doesn't have the beard, the Shemitic beard. You understand? He has shaven his face. He has put on all of the royal um, garments. And he speaks the language, too. This is the key. He speaks the language. We'll find that when the brothers are speaking in the more archaic Hebrew or Ethiopic, that most Egyptians didn't really understand it that well. But Yosef did. But Yosef was not known to be Joseph, their brother. They did not know that Joseph was their brother, which is another key indication that Joseph, because of his ethnicity, because of his particular ethnicity, it was obvious that Joseph, just like Tut here, being black, could pass for black, or could pass for an Egyptian. So him, so-called, being a Shemite, right, a Semite, could also pass for being a Hamite. So this is a key indicator that at this particular time, there was a racial, and in terms of blackness, in terms of, of, of ethnicity, or afro Shemiticness, because this is what they call the language. The language is called Hebrew, is called Afro Shemitic. Ethiopic is Afro Shemitic, and in particular, Amharic is very and, and purely Afro Shemitic language. So the Hebrew language, it's a Semitic language, but more correctly, it's a Shemitic language. So saying Afro Shemitic, you can see here this kind of blue style headdress right here, which is an Afro. You can see this right here is an afro. If you look closer, you can see this is a, a kind of a kind of curls or or a, a nappy hair, but but well set. This is well set nappy hair, well set um, um, locks or mini locks, you know. So this is very clear. It should be very clear to us what the racial definition of the Egyptians were, what their Ethio the Ethio-Shemiticness or Afro-Shemiticness, what it really was. You understand? So this is why we use this, and we're using this as a um, a Joseph type. This would be a Joseph type. This would be a, a art in fact, an artifact that can give you visually visual evidence of the Israelites, in particular of Joseph. So here, in this portion, we have... Judah making a persuasive plea on behalf of his brother Binyam or Benjamin. And Yosef revealing himself to his brothers. The revelation of Joseph revealing himself to his brothers is going to come forward in this particular portion. Um, we also have Jacob, the father, Ya'ikov, coming down to Gubit or Egypt to the... To the to the the Kupta, the Gubit, the Coptic, the Gubit, the Coptic land, the Black land, and Yosef's administration now of Egypt to save lives, but it transforms all of the Egyptians into bondsmen. Now this is very interesting, and there's a resonance for the present time in the economic crisis 2011 globally and in particular in America with the so-called first. African American president or manager, the the chief CEO of the corporation that's known as America, the United States government, and how many of the spiritual Egyptians in in this world system, using Egypt as that metaphor, and even when you look at DC, you see a lot of Egyptian symbolic. Uh, representations which show that Egypt was on their mind when they built the nation's capital. So when Revelation tells us we're in a spiritual Egypt, it should move us to understand in context and correctly what Egypt was like. You understand? And also to recognize, well, who's who in this particular prophetic dispensation. And Jeremiah chapter 23 is also another um, relevant chapter because it points out that no longer would they say that Yah live or Jah lives or Yahai who took us out of Egypt but out of the North Country, out of North America. So North America and this present world system 
of things is a form of a spiritual Egypt today. So there are those Josephs as well in this present time. So here we're going to have Judah's plea to Joseph. And we're going to go through and listen briefly to uh, Paulo's Hila Selassie of the Jerusalem, Jerusalem Beta Christian, reading this from His Majesty's His Majesty's Bible and a and a brief summary of this portion. Let's just get a summary of this portion, which is from verse eighteen, and we're going to go to through to the end of this mitra for this particular chapter. Judah approached Joseph, whom he likened to Pharaoh. So Joseph was likened to Pharaoh and recounted how Joseph had asked the brothers whether they had a father or a brother, and they had told him that they had a father who was an old man and a child of his old age who was a little one whose brother was dead. Now that brother they're talking about is Joseph. Remember, Joseph was sold to the Ishmaelites, the Arabs, and they sold them into Egypt, similar to Negroes, whose ancestors were sold by everyone in particular by the Arabs, the red, pale, red Mohammedan Arabs, and sold to the Europeans who, who brought us over here to the Americas and the Caribbean as that particular lost sheep of the Beta Israel. So here we find that um, Joseph is being told that, well, there was an old man, they have an old man who is their father, Shemagile, and there's a little one, but the brother was dead, who alone was left of his mother and whose father loved him. Now Yehuda, or Judah, recalled how Joseph had told the brothers to bring their younger brother down to Egypt. And they had told Joseph that the lad's leaving would kill his father. But Joseph, Yosef, he insists in this particular portion in chapter 44. Now, Judah recalled how the brothers had told their father Joseph's words, and when their father had told them to go again and to buy a little food, they had reminded him that they, would, that they could not go down without their youngest brother. Now, Judah recounted how their father had told them that his wife had borne him two sons. One had gone out and one was torn in pieces, and if they took the youngest and harm befell him, it would bring down his gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol, to the netherworld or to the underworld, to what they call in, in the translation the grave, but they spoke of the Sheol or in ancient Egypt that was known as the Duat, the Duat. Now, Judah explained to Yosef that if uh, Yehuda were to come to his father without the lad, seeing that his father's soul was bound up with the lad, then his father would die in sorrow. And Judah told how he had become surety or a pledge for the lad, for Binyam, the younger brother, the younger brother of of, of Joseph. Joseph is asking about the younger brother, and the younger brother is his particular um, brother of his mother, and thus asks Joseph to allow him to remain a bondman to Joseph instead of the lad. So Joseph was willing to, in a sense, indenture himself. I mean, excuse me, Judah was willing to indenture himself instead of going and bringing Benjamin because his father was very much um, in love with that boy because the other boy, who was Joseph, in, in, in a sense in disguise here, similar to this Egyptian, to this type, and also black like this type, but they did not know who it was. Now, Joseph, um, he allowed him to remain a bondsman, or actually Joseph allowed him to remain a bondsman, for how could he go up to his father if he was not with him? So this is a very, um, some say it's a very touching scene, but it's interesting to hear the argument of, um, of, of Judah, of Yehuda. You understand? Of, and that's where the Jews, really the true Jews or the black Jews come from Judah, Yehuda. And even the word Jew is an abbreviation of Yehuda. And we have at the root of that the Yod or the Yod. 
which in Ethiopic alone is known as the Yemen, and Yemen means the right hand. So we're going to now go into something a little bit new, but we hope to introduce this as we go forward. Now, just a little bit more on this root word, the root word of this parasha, which in the Hebrew is Vayagash, which comes from Nagash, Nagash. Now I want you to um, make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Because of the obvious linguistic link with Negus. But now it means also in a euphemistic sense to lie with a woman. As an enemy, with an enemy, used with an enemy, that Nagash, which Bamarinya is Karabe, as in Krav Maga, it means to attack. Religiously, it can also mean to worship. To, to, to worship, and it's also utilized within the Kedase, that, that root, um, Mekreb. You understand? To worship causatively is to present, when Christ says, and when you present your gift, to present. Figuratively is to adduce an argument. If you want to present an argument, you may draw that, bring that forward. By reversal is to stand back to make, to approach, to bring forth, hither, near, to cause, to come, hither, near, nigh, to give place, to go hard, up, to be, draw, go, near, or nigh, to offer, or to overtake, to present, to put, or to stand. So there's a legal sense of this. So this is a very interesting, this is a very interesting root word, both in its, its, its Hebraic significance as well as in its Ethiopic and ancient um, um, Afro-Shemitic sense, because it's the root comes out of Africa and from the root in Ethiopia, and we have it in the pure language of the royal Amharic, which we have before us here. So we're going to begin with this particular portion, reading and feeding and listen to the recitation of um, Brother Wendem, uh, Paulos Haila Salase. So we're going to click on this and we're going to use the pointer to point to the relative space that's being read. Kalila, what happened in the total? 
አባቴ የሚያገኘውን መከራ እንዳ ላይ አዎ now that brother of course is a very fluent reader and he was reading that at a very lively pace i hope you could hear it i don't know whether we had it um loud enough but let's just go over this particular area he began off the first part of it first part of the reading the nibab for this uh, sabbatical and this is how the order of the sabbatical when it's when it's formally kept when we gather together one would be called up the alia and as the words are pointed out they would read so this part would be yahudam wada arsuk arba indihim alla geta yahoi ine baria be geta ye joro andi tak alin inde nagar elmanalo ine nim baria hin atik otani anta inda faron nahinna Now the Targum is over here the translation which is King James. So we have the King James translation of that then Judah came near to him and said, "O oh my lord, let thy servant I pray thee speak a word in my lord's ears and let not thine anger burn against thy servant for thou art even as Pharaoh that's the first part of the reading now as we go forward we find he says gitai bariyawchun aba talachun ways when them below ayak my lord asks his servant saying have ye a father or a brother now let's move this uh, a little bit forward like this uh there we go have you a father or a brother inyam legeta ye indi alinne alinne now it's interesting right here was alinne what we find when we study the met of kedus of negus and negus carefully is that in this part of scripture which is like in a in a, in, in a sort of a um, in a chronological sense of order would be an older part of scripture now this is also reflected in particular in his uh, majesty's metaf kedus or in his majesty's bible which um the iota software utilizes they have here alene instead of alen and the alene if you study archaic amharic is one of the archaic amharic features you know we start to get into the the real linguistics and also there is the more archaic amharic and the connection with the gutters and also the whole hebreo shemitic connection within the mix within the language so the language has just like it says the words of of the almighty the words of ha elohim are as pure words that have been purified in 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 a furnace of fire even seven times and we find that influence within the royal amharic language so here once again inyam legeta ye indi alne shimagale abat alen so here we have alen one form alen then we have a more older or a more um dialectical idiom idiomatic express, ex, ex, expression of of more like one could say even more country in a sense alene then we have the more usual form alen here beshimagalen beshimaglenau yeah whether the win tanasha blatena alle when the muma mote and he says his brother is dead kanatum arsu bechawena kare abatum yuwadwal and the father loves him now many have seen that within the love of jacob in a sense for for joseph is a likeness of the love of of yahweh for y- y- yeshua yehoshua or even within the love of abraham and and yishak so these are good um verbal hieroglyphs 
verbal hieroglyphic symbolic examples. Put a higher and antem lebariawoche, what a neam tut, a name ayawalo ale. And he said, and thou saidest to thy servant, bring him down to me that I may set mine eyes upon him. Gitayenim belatenawa batunam meto. I a hon let him. Yetawo in the hone abatua yemotalina alino. Alino. Here again, alino. Here. It says, um, and we said to my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Good higher source. Bariawochinim, Tana Shawanda Machu, Kernantagara Kalamata, Dagmenya Fite Natayun, Allahen. And thou saidest to thy servants, except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. Wada Bariya, Wada Batachina, Betamalesin, Gizem, Ye Gitaye Nakala Nagarino. And it came to pass when we came up to thy servant. My father, we told him the words of my Lord. Kuter Haya Haya Amist Abatachinim Temelasachu Atik Ita Hilla Shema Tulin Ale. And our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. Inyam Aleno Inahida Zenaya Honalinin. A Tanashua when the Machina Kanyagara you word in the Hone in Yamaina were darling. Tanashu when the Machina Kanyagara Kalele Yaziana so Fita Mayeta I Chalenimna I Chalenimna I Chalenimna. He says, and we said, we cannot, we cannot. I challenge for we cannot go down. If our youngest brother be with us, then will we go down, for we may not see the man's face, except our youngest brother be with us. Bariaha batemandihalen. Miste a hula ta wendo chali jochin, in the walada chilin, and nante tauk alachu. And thy servant, my father, said to us, Ye know that my wife bear me two sons. Andum, verse kuter, kuter haya cement, andum, kane wata, aurea bellao. Ala chuhum is kazare maya ala yehutim ala yehutim and one went out from me and I said surely he is torn in pieces and I saw him not since or he said surely an animal has eaten him ala chuhum Y'all said to me, y'all said, Aure Bellau, Bellau. Y'all said that an Aure or a beast, this in the translation is, is missing here. So when we study the verse by verse, we can see sometimes there's a, a minor difference, but sometimes there is a, a more major difference and perhaps even a more significant implication. What a kut er Yehinema kanea leitachu, leitachu degmo, bita westut kufu, kufam, bia genyo, shibatena be hazina, what a makadir ta wordu talachu. And if ye take this also from me and mischief befall him, Ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now, here, what a uh, MacArthur 
it does have macabre, the the actual grave, or I like to say the type of uh, sepulcher, the type of sepulcher, and you can uh, kind of envision like Egypt for setting a, a particular standard for these kind of tombs or these these burial mounds. Kut el Salasa, ahune ine wadabate wadabariya behead. Belate na wima kanyagar kalele, nefsuna bebelate na wa nefsa tasa ralechina, belate na wa kanyagar in the lele by a gize, ye mortal. Now, therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up with the lad's life, or the actual expression is interesting here, where it has nefsu, his soul, bebelatenau, with the, the young man, bebelatena, um, bebelatenau, bebelatenau, nefs, tasaralechna, is tied up, is knotted, which is a very Egyptian, if you understand the symbology of ancient Egypt, is a very... It's like we speak today within a Western, uh, a Western world, or actually an American sense. The whole world knows like Coca-Cola. Some things, some expressions are universally known, even though people may not know much else deeply about Western culture or anything. So these kind of um, similarities are here in certain expressions. Because when you understand this particular expression here that's translated as um, his life is bound up with the lad's life is very symbolic. You understand, know, of love, of the knot, you understand, know, of the knot, of, of a particular um, social context that was Afro Shemitic and coming out of inner Africa and Egypt being the mouthpiece for that particular cultural and ancient archetype. Kuter Salasa and Bariyawo Chihim, Ye Bariyahina, Ye Batachinina, Shibet, Bechizina, Wode Makaber, Yawar Dalu. And it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die, and thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. Kut salasa hulet ine baria babate zend silabilate na wandi hibiye towa shialuna ahunis wadante balamet au babate zen bezemna tulu wahat yatenya onalo for thy servant became surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I bring him not to thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. So we can understand the when we read when we read the Ten Commandments and, and we hear the commandments about honor thy thy father and thy mother, we can see an example of this in this particular area of scripture we see a very good example of this honor and this word code where ones were speaking but they were giving their word their word on like to say the kubre on my my honor you know that their word really where the word really meant something in this dispensation so it it it, it shows you much more as well now when he said forever, it's interesting, Bamarinya, we have this word zemen in the plural, or be zemenat, for ages. This is interesting, not just for one age, when you understand the significance of the word zemen, for many appointed times, hatia tenya, a sinful one, I will become, I will become a lawbreaker, a breaker of ma'at, a breaker of the balance of the equilibrium. You understand? If I do not keep my word, is what he's saying to his 
his disguised brother Yosef, who he he sees as this Egyptian ruler who is like Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's get to the, the two last verses of this particular Mi'ra for chapter. Here we have Silezihim Ine Bariya Begeta Yezen Bariya Honye Bebelatena Wafanta Lik Emet. Now, therefore, I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. Let, let the, the, the young man, the Bilatena, the Bilatena, let him go forward. Or oh, an abbreviated, more modern Amharic, they would say Bilata. Blata for Bilatena to say a young a young man. Now verse Kut er Salasa Arat says Aleziam Bilatena wa kanegar kalela what abate in date what alo. In date you what alo. In other words, how will I go forward if I don't fight the land? Ka in a god kalela Bilatena. In other words, he says, otherwise, aleziam, aleziam, bilatenau, kanegar kalele, what abate, hindete, what alo? Abatena, yemiagenyoena, mekara, and alai, and alai. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil, or really, he, uh, Bamarinya is the trouble, the Mekara, the Mekara or the tribulation. You know, in Scripture, there is the portion of Scripture that's called Jacob's trouble. Mm-hmm. And in speaking of Jacob's trouble, this interesting phraseology here, understand that's not really evil, that's being said here, according to the royal Amharic, but Mekara, Mekara, and the Amharic is very accurate, extremely accurate. You know, same with the ancient and the most genuine, authentic texts of Scripture. And even for I and I who have studied it and read and, and prayed in the Holy Spirit through the words, the, the, the king's Amharic, we still find much that we're learning about it, but much still that is for lack of a better word, amazing and, and very interesting and, and still requires more investigation because the word says that it's the, it's, 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 it's the glory of God to, to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings for I and I to search out the matter. So here we see a foreshadowing also in this closing verse here of this portion of um, this week's Torah portion number 11, that is known as Karebe, approach, draw near, or Vayigash, Vayigash, in the Ibrayist, in the, in the Hebrew, we find a very interesting connection down here with Jacob's trouble. And Jacob's trouble would have been that he would have not seen his younger, his younger son, and the connection with Judah, now, when we put this into the bigger context of the bigger picture, it becomes very, very interesting as we recognize that Judah is the Afro-American within the true interpretation of prophecy, that Yehuda is the Afro-American and that Binyam is the West Indian and that our father, our true father and the father of modern Africa, according to to the word of, of prophecy and the revelation, according to God in his history, is Kedamawi Haile Selassie, or the Ancient of Days. So now when we see this kind of significance between, say, even Binyam or, or, or Yosef and the Father, and recognize in the prophetic dispensation who are the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, this particular reading and feeding of the Torah portion, which is uh, uh, basically a very good story, 
it's just a good story at a basic, uh, you know, Bible study for children. You can show them the, the, the literal meaning of it, but then it also has a prophetic resonance, which is important for us in this particular um, day and time. So we're going to conclude this particular portion right about, right about, um, right about here, right about now. And um, the brothers are reading and feeding um, Paulo's Haile Selassie, whose uh, portion of this, we, we played a portion of it. What we like to do, if possible, is to uh, give you a little bit more of this um, um, coming forward AS. AP. So, brothers and sisters, um, stay tuned. Um, more to come. Yah willing. Shabbat Shalom. Senbet Salam.